first though, we have one of the biggest issues for your campaign is the questions about money and your clerk of court's campaign mm -hmm. account. And that was spent for your congressional campaign. Some people don't think that was legal. So we know you see it differently. So this is now before the Ohio Election Commission. It had a hearing last month. Nine on your side was in Columbus for that hearing. And we would like to start by playing part of reporter Tom McKee's report from that day to give people just a little more background. The preliminary hearing on the issue took just over an hour with big gaps in views on whether laws were broken. A main focus was whether Purval's congressional campaign was using clerk of court's campaign money to pay the bills. Attorney Brian Shrive says yes, pointing to a $16,000 check supposedly for consulting when the memo said poll balance. We don't have to prove our case here today. You don't have to believe anyone's guilty or not today. What you have to believe is, does this smell right? You have to ask that question, does this smell right? Pureval's lawyer Brian Swoboda says Shrive's complaint simply doesn't hold water. Ohio law and federal law expressly provide for the concurrent operation of a local campaign and a federal campaign at the same time. They provide expressly for receipts into those committees. They provide expressly for disbursements from those committees. Then the commissioner heard about Byron Photography's taking pictures at Pureval's congressional kickoff, but there was no bill from the federal campaign. Once again, disagreement. These are payments that were made. Uh, for the purpose of skirting the federal campaign finance laws, and we're in violation of Ohio campaign finance law. But that still does not present a violation of Ohio law. That is precisely the sort of expense that a campaign is going to incur. So we need to add this. This is far from settled. The next hearing could be October 11th, November 1st, or even another date. And you have a lot at stake here, obviously. Aside from the impact on the campaign, if there were laws broken, the possible penalties include fines, even potentially jail time. So let's give you this opportunity. Let's clear it up. Did you use your clerk of court funds to pull a congressional race? Yeah, so this is what happened. Here are the facts, because this issue has been swirling around a lot, and I'm, I'm glad to be here to, to set it straight. I took a poll in January to determine uh, in near the beginning of the year to determine whether or not a congressional race made sense or whether I should stay put at the clerk of court's office. We, we consulted uh, the FEC regulations and precedent and it suggested that in that instance you should pay for the poll out of your local account and out of your federal account. We did that because we were trying to stay consistent with the spirit and the letter of the law. Now if that turned to your point it's being litigated, if that turns out to be incorrect we will uh, remedy that situation immediately. But Tanya, you know this, this election uh, is going to turn on the issues that are facing the people of the first congressional district about health care, access to good quality, affordable health care, the economy, the fact that the middle class hasn't had a raise in nearly two decades when compared to inflation. People are struggling out there, and those are the, those are the issues that they're going to they're gonna be asking me and Congressman Shabbat about. Unfortunately, Steve Shabbat, he's been in Congress for 22 years, for two decades. The man's been running for office for 40, which is longer than I've been alive, and we have very little to show for it, and, and that's what this election's going to be about. Okay, so we're going to get to a whole lot of that, but let's stay with this, this issue. So, yes, you are indeed saying that you, the clerk of court's budget or your money for that no, was well, used let me, for let me let me be very clear not the so clerk of court's the budget. clerk of your, court's budget taxpayer money was, was not spent on this but the clerk account for my political campaign and the federal account the poll was paid out of both of those accounts which was what fec regulations and precedent suggest and you're again, an attorney do you be you believed that that was legal Absolutely, because we were trying to stay consistent with the spirit and the letter of the law. And again, Tanya, if it's being litigated, if that turns out not to be the case, then we will remedy the situation immediately. But again, the, when I'm out talking to voters in Cheviot or Westwood, Mason or Lebanon, they're asking me about what I'm going to do to protect their coverage for pre-existing pre conditions. Because unfortunately, Steve Shabbat has voted several times repeatedly to strip coverage for pre-existing conditions like diabetes, breast cancer, childbirth, that actually hurts people. The check on the Hamilton County Board of Elections at, that, that was there had a redacted line yeah. on the memo line. Did you instruct anyone or did anyone else instruct, I, I believe it was Sally Krizzle, to, to redact that line? Yeah, so the redaction was unacceptable. It shouldn't have happened, it won't happen again. But again, the, the issues that the voters are asking me about are about health care and about taxes. The fact that this tax bill blows a nearly $2 trillion hole in the deficit that Steve Shabbat is now campaigning on, that now puts Social Security and Medicare at risk. Tanya, asking the middle class to pay for a tax break for billionaires and millionaires is just unfair. I'm not trying to be a... Uh, 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 
a pain here, but no, not at you all. Did, I don't believe you answered that question. Did you, or do you know if anyone else instructed her to redact that line? I did not uh, instruct uh, that redaction, and more to the point, it was unacceptable, and it won't happen again. Okay, and so one more question on this. The attorney in that piece, Brian Shrive, also claims some donations from your mother may have skirted federal campaign laws. Please address that, and do you believe that she did everything legally? Yes, absolutely. Uh, that's just not true. Again, these issues are being litigated. I'm confident we're going to prevail, but I'm also confident we're going to prevail in November because after two decades in Congress, Steve Shabbat can only run a negative, over-the-top, cynical, and divisive campaign. He hasn't run a single ad or talked to the voters. He hasn't even talked to, to you, Tanya, about what he plans to do uh, productively for the people of the 1st District. He's, he's just nowhere to be found. We have discussed this issue through. I appreciate that your time on that. We are going to take a quick break. Aftab Pierval and Congressman Shabbat, by the way, he mentioned this a little bit, will debate each other several times. Nine on Your Side is working with the Western Economic Council to bring you a debate. It'll happen on October 24th. It happens at 7 o'clock. I'm happy to moderate that debate. We're going to have that for you on air and online. The other debates are October 16th and on October 30th. We are going to continue our conversation with Aftab Pierval in just a moment. Stay with us.